I guess the last time, three times that I've recorded this have been in time-lapse mode. So I have to start over from the start again. So, so, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna start over again. Here we go. Bah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Should I play this a little bit? I am so like, I am so frustrated that my camera did that to me. I am so frustrated that my phone actually did that to me. You and you know. Super Mario Health Edition. That's what you. <laughs> that's your special song for the day. It was totally awful. Um, we're gonna try this again. All right. the CMA of course if you have seen my channel before welcome back if you have not seen my channel before I talk about anything and everything medical assisting and beyond today we're just going to talk about a medical assistant and how they became a medical assistant and I think the best medical assistant that we have to talk about medical assisting is probably the medical assistant that's sitting right here should really make this into a game that you do something every time I say medical assisting I heard you like medical assisting, so I medical assistanted your medical assistant so she could medical assistant. Try saying that three times fast. It was hard enough for me to do it once. So today let's just talk about how I got to medical assisting and hang back and hope you enjoy. Um. Starting from the beginning, I've always loved the medical field. When I was in high school, you know, they never re really teach you what fields you have the options of going into other than here's English, here's biology, here's chemistry, here's... They don't really give you the options. So for me, I was very, very interested in biology. You know, when you're in school and you don't really know what options you have, you don't really always pick the best choice first off of what you want to go for, which is why most people that go to college, they change their major to to three times during the time that they're in college. So I'm one of those people that changed it two to three times. The first time that I wanted to go to school, I wanted to go to auto mechanic school. I liked learning how things worked. I liked fixing things. I liked diagnosing things. I liked being able to do that. And I went to school for that for two days, only two days, not two weeks, not two months, not two semesters, two days. Um, almost two hours though but I went to school for that for two days and the third day I really I gave up I knew that that was not for me I did not want to fight for myself being a female wanting to be an auto mechanic and I just wanted to go to school that's all I wanted to do and the students that were in that class that college and the just the general curriculum for the auto mechanic school they were not very accepting or welcoming of of women in general i ended up going to the school that my dad was an instructor at um it was also a technical college so with me i knew that i wasn't going to be going to a big college. I wasn't going to be going to a university or a big private school or anything like that. I already knew that I was going to be going to a technical school, so I didn't take an ACT or SAT. I didn't really watch my GPA because I had to take an entrance exam anyway, you know. Um, so I ended up going to school and I had no idea at that college what I wanted to do with myself. Me the medical field really wasn't in my head at all. And so I really didn't know what I was gonna do. And my mom suggested that I try nursing assisting. I did the nursing assistant class and then I was on my clinical for that. And I thought it was really fun. I actually did. I thought it was really fun, but there were certain things that I really didn't like about the job. Um, but so the nursing assistant clinical that I did really got me interested in doing nursing in general. 
And so I attempted my luck at going to school for nursing at my college that I was going to. Nobody really knew how to get me into the nursing program. And then by the time that I had everything straight myself without going to any of the counselors or anything anymore, it was a two-year wait to get into the program. So I had wasted three and a half years being at that school, doing generals, and trying my hardest to get into applying for the nursing program that if I would have actually done the nursing program with a two-year wait, I might as well have gone to school to be a doctor for serious. And I really, really, really don't want to be a doctor. They, I am 75% of my doctor's brain most of the time when he's in clinic. So, um, and that's kind of a lot. That's what I'm, I'm over half of his brain when he's in clinic. I decided that, you know, I was going to take a semester off. I was going to take a break from school and I didn't really know what to do. And I decided to apply to become a flight attendant. They wanted to hire me on the spot. I passed everything, my background check, fingerprints, everything, except one of my employers did not get back to them. So that ended up falling through. I didn't get the job because my one employer did not get back to them. And this sounds really cheesy and it's really stupid because it is like the epitome of my irritation with the medical assisting world. But I saw my school's commercial on TV and I actually had no idea what a medical assistant was. And I had no idea what they really did. I had no idea about anything. So I looked into it and I called the school and I got into the school and things went really good. Obviously, I'm a medical assistant now. Um, I was a 5.0 student. 5.0? Man, you be getting like AA pluses. Be like a Ritzy Hotel. I'm a five star student. It's like a, just like a Hilton. I was a 4.0 student and I did have perfect attendance as well. I was just so excited and proud of myself for being able to do that because I had never been that way before in my life. I had never cared about my grades. I had never, um, I wouldn't say I never cared about showing up for things, but I never really wanted to to do a lot of things, going to school and having to show up for things instead of going to school and wanting to show up for school. Those are two different things. And um, so I was on the dean's list. I had perfect attendance. I, I rocked it out. I really did. So I knew when I was in school that I wanted to do OBGYN. And when I was on my externship, I was lucky enough to be able to work with the breast cancer physicians at an oncology clinic and gynecological oncology as well. And when I got my first job, I really liked being in the OBGYN field. I just did not like the place that I worked. I probably knew within the first five days that that was not the place for me, but with (laughs) with any job, this is just the dumbest thing, with any job, You know that you can't go anywhere that you want to be unless you have like two to five years of experience doing it already, which doesn't make any sense. So with me, I took the job so that I could get my experience in. If I liked the job, that would have been great, but it wasn't what I wanted to do and it wasn't how I wanted to approach medical assisting. So that brought me to the job that I have right now. And I've been there for three years. I work with one physician and I am still an OBGYN. I do a lot of different things. You know, I, I feel like I have a lot of responsibilities and they're appropriate responsibilities for my job. So I'm taking phone calls from patients. I am getting questions from patients. I'm rooming patients. I'm giving injections. I'm doing lab. Um, I'm refilling prescriptions. I'm being 75% of my physician's brain when he's in the clinic because I even talked about it with him. He's like, yes, you are kind of 75% of my brain. You do everything first. And then I'm the one that goes in there and follows up and finishes everything. And I close everything up after you've already done everything. 
and I'm the, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that physicians don't know happen. My physician actually has a specialty in endometriosis. If you don't know what endometriosis is, do not Google it. You should know better than that if you are one of my followers. Do not Google endometriosis. Endometriosis, I will tell you right here, endometriosis is a disorder or a disease that females get where the endometrium, so the lining of your uterus, is not on the inside of your uterus. It's actually either scattered around in your uterus where it's not supposed to be or it's in different parts of your body. They've seen it on lungs. They've seen it just everywhere. And it tends to be a very painful disease. And the doctor that I work for is a specialty physician for endometriosis. And I can't even tell you how much I've learned from him over the past two years. I've worked there for three, but I've worked with him for two. And it's it's been amazing. I really do enjoy working with him. Being in the field is really when the learning begins and the grading ends. And I think that that's the most important, imp important part, <laughs> important part. <laughs> I think that's the most important part of life is when those grades end and when life really begins is after that and what you learn and what you take in and what you do after that that's what really matters where you take yourself that's what matters and um he's really allowed me to do that with my medical assisting and i'm very happy about where i am that's one of the reasons why i made my youtube channel is because i'm so happy when i'm at work that when I come home, I, I don't want to stop working. All right, guys. Well, I think we're done for today. I think I have exhausted myself and exhausted you guys from hearing about me um, and how I became a medical assistant. So, hope you enjoyed the video today. Happy 10th video to me, I guess. Um, what I'd really like for you guys to do if you have any ideas of things that you'd like me to talk about on my channel and have a video about, please list it in the comments down below. Um, I do obviously have a list, but I want to see if there's anything that you guys can catch me off guard with and give me ideas about, and I would definitely be willing to do that because that's more of something of you guys picking my brain than me just making up things of what I should talk about on my page that makes sense. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Um, leave questions or anything in the comments box down below and we'll see you soon. Bye guys.